These are five of my top CSS tips and tricks that you should know. Here we have this video player, so class of video, and the video player is a width of 400 pixels and a height of 225 pixels. So this is 16 by nine, which is what we expect for a video player. But the problem is if I change one of these values to say 200 pixels, the other one's not going to update with it. So there are a few ways to solve this, but I think the best way is using aspect ratio. So aspect ratio lets you set an aspect ratio instead of setting a width and a height. So now the height is going to be based on the width. And we can say we want this to be 16 by nine. And now we get that 16 by nine video. But if I change this width, it is also going to change the height. And we can also use this to make other aspect ratios. So for example, we could say we have an aspect ratio of one, and this is going to create a perfect square no matter how big we make this width. Now we have this 200 pixel by 200 pixel blue square. But again, the issue here is that these values aren't really based on each other in the code. So if we changed one of them, we would have to remember to change the other one. And of course, like we've seen before, we can use aspect ratio to solve this. So we can say an aspect ratio of one is going to keep a perfect square. But another option, particularly if we have a value being used in a bunch of different places, is going to be to create a variable. So we use two dashes and then a variable name. So maybe side length, and we can set this to be 200 pixels. And then anywhere in our CSS code, we can use that side length. So we can say this is a variable. So we have this variable function, and then we pass in that name, and that's going to be our width. And we can do the same thing for height. So we can say the variable of side length, save this, and it still works. And then if I was to change this value to say 400 or maybe 500 pixels, it is going to keep updating the width and the height. And these variables or custom properties as they are technically called can be super useful for lots of things. So for example, in most of my projects, I create these global custom properties that I can use through the entire CSS files for things like the colors of the website to make sure I'm being consistent. Here I have this H1 that says hello world and it's white and it's over this white box, but the H1 has position fixed. So if I scroll, it stays in the same spot, but we can see it gets covered by the white box if I scroll too far. So how can we solve this? How can we make sure that we can always see this text? Well, for this, we can use something known as a mix blend mode, which allows you to say, how is this element going to be affected by the color of the background? So for example, we can set this to be difference, which is basically going to subtract the two colors from each other. So now when I save this, this stays as white, but when we scroll over the white box, it changes to black to be the opposite color. And we can even see if it's half covered, the top half stays as white and the bottom half is going to be black. And now there are a bunch of different mix blend modes. So I will leave a link down in the description if you're interested in learning more about the different options. Here we have three boxes, red, green, and blue, and we have links to all of those boxes, which is done using these anchor tags in the HTML, which link to these different IDs. But what if we wanted to more smoothly scroll? Well, for that, we can add smooth scroll. So we can say on the root selector, which is going to affect the entire page, we can say that we want to have smooth scroll. So this is going to be scroll behavior, and we can set this equal to smooth. We can save this, and now when I click on any of these, it's going to smoothly scroll to that spot. Now it is worth noting that this one can be a little bit annoying for some users, so do use it sparingly. If you have tons of links inside of your page, maybe don't do it on the root, and only use it in particular scroll containers where you think it's going to be a nice effect. Here we can see we have two different lists, both of which have nested lists inside of them. And in the styling, we have the list items inside of an ordered list are blue, and then any doubly nested list item, so anything inside of a nested list, is going to be a color of red. But this is a little bit clunky to have to write all of this out. So what we can do instead is to use the is pseudo class. So the is pseudo class allows you to match multiple different things. So for example, we can say we have an ordered list or an unordered list, and then inside of that list, we need another list. So we can use is one more time and do the exact same thing. And then inside of there, we do have the list items. And now this is going to be the exact same as this. So we can actually get rid of that, leave it like this, and it's going to work the same way. There's also something known as where, which works basically the exact same as is, but the difference is that where does not get any specificity. So if I save this, it's actually still going to be overridden by this ordered list 
list item selector here. So this is actually more specific than this because where gets no specificity, whereas is does get some specificity. And now if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out this video where I have five of my favorite JavaScript tips.